Hey everyone, I'm really excited with this video. This is actually a follow-up to a post-production video I did on turning a colour photo to black and white and doing that in a way which is a little bit more impactful than just desaturating or some of the other black and white conversion methods that you may have seen. What I want to do in this video is actually take that image a step further and see if we can create a more artistic look. So we're going to dive out of the realms of pure photography here and go for a more artistic aesthetic, maybe an illustrative look. So this is the image that we ended up last time from a starting point of this. What I'd like to do is actually open this in Aurora and just see what results we get. Usually HDR software is designed to combine several exposures to bring out the highlights and the shadows and combine that all into a one beefy goodness. Um, but in this case, what I want to do is just use one image and see how it handles it. I'm hoping to get a really illustrative look. So let's load up Aurora. And up she comes. We're going to open the image. And here is our exported image from Lightroom. Click on that. So it's going to make an HDR image from that single image. Sure, let's create the HDR. So it's detecting the dynamic range, improving the colors that aren't it, none, and final touches to make it awesome. I like that. And that's straight away, straight out of the box, we've got a really illustrative look, which is full of details in the highlights, details in the shadows, which is what HDR software is all about. So this is our starting point. We haven't even done anything with any of these sliders yet. This is purely what Aurora has done bringing it in and I'm really liking this result already. We can see that there's a whole heap of detail. Um, if we use this eye tool here, we can see the before and the after. You can see that that original image is very much a photographic image and here we have a much more illustrative look where we're seeing everything. Now, whether or not you like that look, um, that is a matter of uh, artistic opinion. Um, but we are going for this illustrative look here. So let's see what else we can do. Um, I think we're going to leave the exposure where it is, but let's play with the contrast. Okay, I don't think we need to boost that too much. Smart tone. Okay, not really digging what smart tone is up to. If we bring it to the left, it's bringing in or darkening down those highlights, which may be a good thing for this illustrative look we're going for. Let's bring the highlights down. Shadows, let's see what happens if we boost those up or down. I may actually drop those down so that the detail in the background is not overpowering our subject, Nick. And then we can just bring that exposure back up a wee bit. Now I feel that we don't really have any whites at the moment, so let's let's bring that up just a smidge and let's see what's happening with the blacks. I don't want to crush these blacks out too much. Let's just leave those where they are. HDR enhance. What goes on if we grab the clarity? Now it's it's muddying that up quite a lot. I'm I'm finding the clarity there just a bit too blocky. I don't really enjoy that. So let's leave that alone. HDR smart structure. Yeah, the, now that just smacks of HDR. That is not a good look on his face. But we could we could steal a little bit of that. We could feather that in just slightly. HDR microstructure. Again, I'm not really digging on that too much. But we could have a little tiny hint of it. Uh, we could soften it as well. Let's do that. Uh, now LUT mapping. I'm a big fan of LUTs. Um, but for this particular image, we're going to leave those alone. Image Radiance is a tool which Skylum have used in Luminar, and I really like this tool. So let's let's try it here. I like the fact that it's included in Aurora as well. That's brilliant. Um, so this is quite nice because what it's doing, it's giving it quite a bit of a kind of soft glow to it. But that glow is actually getting rid of some of that overpowering... Um, over the top detail that we had. It's just softening that in and I, I quite like that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a slider that's there to be played with in an artistic way so 
let's go for it let's leave that around 26 nice polarizing filter well there's nothing to polarize there's no blues in there let's have a look at HDR detail boost okay so we've got the small details medium and large yeah I'm doing what I often do which is grab sliders and I'll move them all the way to the right just to see exactly what they're doing because sometimes if you start just making small micro adjustments you're not really getting a feel for what it's doing but if you push it all the way to the right you go aha this is the look it's creating how much of that do I want and in this case I think we'll just have a little bit of each of these so with the tone curve what we could do is move the blacks up slightly just to give it a slightly washed out look we could bring the whites down if we wanted to as well as I say we're going for a more illustrative look here with this and I think we'll leave that where it is we could do some color toning now one of the nice things in here is we can actually dodge and burn directly within the HDR program so let's actually do that let's start darkening down with a slightly lower strength these edges because I'm just finding them just a little overpowering now just like in Photoshop you can control the size of the brush with your with your bracket keys which is really nice so let me just paint in this background a little bit because it was just because it tries to bring out all the details it brightens those areas up and we still want them to fall off into the background we don't want them to overpower Nick as our subject let's just go around his head just slightly darkening that too and I think we may need to erase a little bit off the top of his head that's um, yeah dirtied that area up there okay we could add a vignette just to darken that further and I'm quite liking that as well would be far too strong probably from a photographic point of view and a little bit over the top but because we're going for an illustrative approach I'm quite pleased with that Guys, I'm really pleased with that. Um, just with a really short space of time, we were able to create a really different look with this image. So I just brought the uh, photograph that we processed in Lightroom straight into Aurora, and without doing anything with any of the settings, it gave us a really nice illustrative feel straight away. And for me, the creative possibilities that that can open up, my mind's going, you know, racing with with what I could be doing with not just leaving it there but potentially taking that into Photoshop if I wanted to layering that up with the original um, maybe looking at blend modes with Photoshop as well so that's another direction we could take it or if you're wanting to leave it just exactly as what we've created here as a more uh, illustrative and kind of like hand-drawn looking um, you could leave that exactly where it is. Aurora for the win on this one. I am testing it currently for more landscape work and architectural work, but it's really cool to know that I'm able to um, use utilize it for more than that as well in a more creative way. So if you guys want to get your hands on a copy of Aurora, you can do that. There's a link below, and the guys from Skyland have kindly given me a code which should give you guys a discount, and that is at Sky10. So if you are getting a copy of it, make sure you use that. I believe you can also download a free copy so you can try all this software as well. So give it a whirl and see what you can come up with too. Thanks, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.